It's that time of year to think about some activities that you can do that are spring and summer related, maybe even some outdoor activities. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet, and in today's video, I am putting together a compilation of some of the favorites from the past that I think are really great to even do now. All of these ideas will get you inspired to create some activities on your own, especially for spring and summer. The first activity I have for you is for sight words, or if you have a younger child, you could do letters. In our case, we're doing spelling words, and this is a sight word kick and I got some of those cones from the Dollar Tree they come two to a pack so I have a couple of those and I'm gonna tape my spelling words onto each cone or your sight words or your ABC's or your number recognition whatever you want to do if you want this to really really last I recommend using a heavy cardstock and laminating them and then taping them on there real good with probably some masking tape or painters tape so they don't come off very easily and you can do this game in a various number of ways I have a soccer ball and I'm gonna have my kids kick the soccer ball because they can do that but if your child cannot kick a soccer ball that well into the direction they want it to go you can have them roll it you can have them tag it you can have them knock over the cone and so you can have them call out a word and hit it or you can have them hit it and call out that word this is a great repetitive task that includes some great physical activity to get them moving and learning at the same time and knocking down cups now I have a couple suggestions on this one and it would vary per the age and skill level of your child you also notice that my cups are labeled so this can be done various different ways for different games so you can just have your child call out a number for number recognition maybe they want to hit the number one two or three in order maybe you mix them up and have them hit them in order so that you can work on practicing sequencing but if your kids already know their numbers maybe you shout out a math problem and they have to shoot the answer off the wall another suggestion trying your alphabet phonics ABC's matching letters sight words calling out the sight words they call out the sight words when they hit it this one can go a long way it's a fine motor scavenger bug hunt so I have a whole bunch of insects and creepy crawly things here and we are hunting for bugs I'm going to throw in my fine motor component with some tweezers here I'm gonna put a link to these down below in the description box and then I have my bug catcher this one came from the Dollar Tree and I just saw them over there too and they also come with tweezers inside go ahead and hide all of your figurines throughout your yard if you want to make it easy just make it real obvious and put them in the grass once they find them they'll use their tweezers or their fine motor tool to put it inside their specimen jar and they collect that way. It's a really safe way to collect bugs and be able to examine all of the figurines and then talk about them afterwards. I wasn't sure if this one was gonna work, but it ended up being a lot of fun. In the arts and crafts section, you're definitely gonna to wanna to pick up some Velcro. You can also find some of this in the hardware section, and it comes in many different forms. We have squares, strips, and also circles. Then I added this little apron from the craft section. This is an optional thing. It actually made it easy, and it comes in different colors. And then some felt. They have some craft felt in the Dollar Tree and different kinds of packages. If you wanted to get matching colors to make this more of a game, that might be something to consider. So basically, you're gonna take Take your apron, unfold it. This works best for probably younger kids. You're gonna see my 10 year old wearing it. She is kind of on the small side, but it did fit her. These might come in adult. I'm not 100% sure. Alternatively, you can also do this with just a plain t-shirt. Then we take the ping pong balls and we applied a whole bunch of Velcro onto these ping pong balls, just enough to go all the way around so that when you throw it onto the felt, it's actually going to stick. Next, we're gonna put on the felt. I had some from Daiso, which is just like a dollar store, but it's what I had on hand. And so I'm firm believer, use what you have first. We're going to attach it just using some safety pins onto the apron. You could probably use some craft glue too, but I just use the safety pins just to be quick and easy. Or you can safety pin the felt onto your own t-shirt. I do like the idea of the apron because you can take it off with different children and be really quick about it and you can make them identical. Next, you put that on and get to playing. We did a few trial runs too just for target practice and as you can see, the balls were sticking right on. My kids thought this was hilarious. We tried some variations where we made her move back and forth and trying to get it that way. You could also try it on your back and come up with a couple of different ideas for this game. I call it the ball push where you place a ping pong ball, which you can get at Dollar Tree, a whole package of them, and you squirt your water to move your ping pong ball across a certain distance. You can set this up like a relay or a race, or you could do it as a timed race to see who can do it the fastest, but really using that precision and the hand high coordination to get that water squirter to push that ping pong ball across the yard. Next up, we have the water eraser, which is a personal favorite where you 
you take a fence or even a sidewalk and you write some letters on them. Once again, do math problems, do sight words, do whatever skill level is appropriate for your child. And then you squirt to erase one of those letters. So let's say, let's do the letter A. So we squirt to get the A off the board. Maybe you do a word. What letter is in the beginning of ball? And then they have to find the B and squirt the B off the wall. So we are doing a measurement hunt and I have found several objects in our yard. You can also have your kids find the objects and I have a list on here. One side on our graph here, we have an item and on the other side we have the measurement. So my second grader is filling it in with the very first item we found, which is a rock. You're also gonna need some kind of measuring instrument. We are working on centimeters right now, but you can do inches or you can just do lengths of string or paper clips if you want. And you put the measurement on the other side. It's a nice way to get out into nature to also emphasize some skills that you might be learning in your homeschooling right now as we are and to get some good writing practice and recording. We kept it simple here with just a few objects but you can definitely build on it depending on where your child is at. Now my girls wanted to set this one up for you guys, so this was completely their idea. It's a ball toss and score. They assigned points for the furthest away bucket all the way down to one point for that bucket closest to them. And they wanted to see if they could get the balls inside each one of those buckets. And it looked like it was gonna be easy, but it really wasn't because the plastic balls would just bounce right out. So they had to get it just right in that toss in order to score their points. So they put this all together and they wanted me to show you guys their idea for for activities. I wanted to take it one step further by writing a number on each ball. Now my camera is a little overexposed so it's hard to see the numbers that I'm writing. Sorry about that. It was a super sunny day. But I wrote the numbers one to each ball and I just used a dry erase or a sharpie marker and that's all I did. And then once you have all of your balls assigned a number, you can do as many balls as you'd like. You just spread them around the yard. If you want to make it easy, put them all close together. If you want to make it hard, you can hide them like an Easter egg hunt in bushes and trees in order to find them. The whole goal is to pick them up in order. So we're learning number sequencing here. We're doing number recognition and trying to find them and put them in our buckets in the correct order. Let's move gears a little bit and get a bucket of water and chalk. Sidewalk chalk right now is at Dollar Tree. In fact, it's just about everywhere at Target and Walmart. So, so grab some chalk and put a new spin on it. I haven't tried this before, but my kids loved it. We just simply dunked the chalk into the water and it suddenly became chalk paint. So they kept saying it felt like paint. So it's a really fun way and a vibrant way to switch up the good old chalk method. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend giving it a whirl just to see how it goes. And of course it washes off just like chalk. Now you're going to go through chalk a little bit more than you would normally, but it's totally a fun activity to do, especially if you can get a box of chalk at the dollar store. Do a water squirter knockdown. So I am having them turn over each one and put them in a row. And the reason why we're turning them over is because we're gonna take those same balls we used from the Dollar Tree and place them on top. Now, if you're starting off, you don't need the balls to have numbers. You could just have the plain old balls. Trust me, they're gonna have fun either way. Then you're gonna grab some of those Dollar Tree water squirters. I personally like these smaller ones that come two to a pack. They pack a lot of punch for the summer. Highly recommend them. I even have a whole video on water squirter activity Activities. You should check that out next after you watch this video. So we have them all lined up and all on top. We got our bucket of water and this time they are going to be squirting it together at the same time. You could do this as a relay, see how many you can get down a certain amount of seconds. You can have each child have their own set they have to do. You can have them take turns, whichever. They just had fun trying to knock those balls off the tops of those buckets. They did this several times after I turned off the camera. It was so much fun. If you need to find these rainbow frisbees, they are amazing. A dollar each and they're actually name brand. I think they're from Whammo. I'm going to spread them around the yard in any arrangement that you want. And I'm going to take some bean bags. Now these bean bags I've had for a long time and I like them because they come in rainbow colors. If you're looking for bean bag, I'm going to put these down below in my description box because I like how they say the color name on one side. And these are going to last you a long time. These are absolutely great. This is a simple bean bag color match toss where you try to match up the colors. This is perfect for toddlers. This is perfect for preschool.
preschoolers learning the colors and also trying to aim to actually get the bean bag on the frisbee. A very simple activity. You can do it in multiple different ways. You can assign points per color. You can move them around. You can rearrange them. You can walk to them instead of tossing them. You can go farther back to toss them and you can have a lot of variations. I also have it set up here in rainbow order where you can assign larger points for the ones that are farther away or even who can get them all. It actually looks easy but my and my almost eight-year-old and nine-year-old are doing this and as you can see it's still a challenge so you can make it as easy or as difficult as you would like. If you like this video I have some more up here on the screen go watch those next I'll see you over there make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.